So we proved the first proof obligation related to guard strengthening of refinements, namely the one for ML out events, the concrete events ML out. And we proved that it's a concrete guard actually implies the abstract guard. That's exactly what the guard strengthening was about. And if you are wondering about the intuition why this proof, uh, proof obligation should be formulated this way, you can look at the previous video before we uh, started the proof. And let's now move on to the other one. Because we mentioned that the number of proof obligation you have to formulate related to guard strengthening depends on how many abstract guards we have. And luckily, for both the MLL and MLN, each one of them in the abstract version, abstract version in the initial model, we only got one guard constraint. So in total, we got two. This was the first one, and this is the second one. And this is actually the solution to uh, the exercise I assigned to you. Hopefully, you actually did it and understood about why uh, the sequence for this uh, MLN should be formulated in this way, right? For that one, I'm going to assume you're okay. Can we discharge this proof uh, obligation as a sequence? Can we actually prove this sequence? Is it provable? And I would say, yep, let's now, why don't we uh, let you pause the video right now and then you can think about it. I would say you should be able to decide whether or not it's actually provable using the two sets of example inference rules that we have covered so far. You can now pause the video and think about or tell, tell me whether you think that's provable or not. Okay, you can pause the video now. Already, so if you thought about it, I can tell you that it's actually provable. Okay, hopefully you didn't really actually uh, peek, you know, what's really happening later in the slides. It's actually provable, but for those of you who may still want to do uh, the proof by yourself, I can give you a little bit of hints. Let me now give you a second chance. This is actually the sequence uh, related to the guard, uh, the strengthening of guards constraint for MLN. This is the one, and. This can actually be proved using only these relevant uh, inference rules. These should be enough to actually discharge this particular sequence. And can you see how? Let's now have you pause the video and think about it. Already, assuming that you thought about it, well, if you already completed the proof, good for you. But I'm just hoping to share some insight together with you why we should really take this particular path to apply the inference rule. What I want to uh, draw your attention to is this. You can see for this particular one here, let me just highlight the important parts. I would say for proving refinements, concrete invariants are actually very important, especially the concrete invariants. Uh, if you actually specify some the property about the concrete variables, for example, this one here is about the bridge being one way, right? Either going to the island or going to the mainland. And this one here is also very important because you try to draw the relationship between the abstract variable n and also the concrete variable abc. So these two concrete variants are very important, right? So these two, I would say, may, uh, most likely they would be useful for us to really prove anything that's important. So this would be the concrete invariants that we may want to use later. And this part over here is specifically is the guard, the concrete guard over here. So this is a concrete guard for MLN, right? Which is different from the uh, concrete guard for ML out. Okay? You can see this is a concrete guard, right? And earlier we said that since we got very perfect form for the uh, EQLR, for example, this kind of thing, right? Like equality. So we thought we can simply replace every occurrence of C by zero, and then we were able to discharge the sequence. We were lucky. But now, if you look at the uh, concrete guard over here, we don't have any equality over here. So you can see it's an inequality. So given larger than over here, we can no longer just use the equal equality rule from left to right or from right to left. It simply wouldn't work. However, if you look more closely, we do have something that gets very close to really uh, give us the, the chance to uh, really apply the EQLR or EQRL. If you look at this, this is one of the concrete invariants over here. And this one here, A equals zero or C equals zero. If you only consider the entire disjunction, of course you cannot apply EQLR, you cannot, because it requires, it, uh, requires over here in the hypothesis, the equality. However, we did learn about how to split. If you actually uh, got some disjunction as the hypothesis, we know from ORL over here, 
if you actually got this junction being the hypothesis, we will be able to split them into two separate sequence. So proof P and proof uh, with Q. Well, you can actually prove the same goal either with the uh, either with the hypothesis Q or with the hypothesis P. Right? That's what you can do. In that case, we will be able to use either A equals zero in one sequence, or we can use C equals zero in the other sequence. Right? Hopefully, so far you're okay. My point is, now for the concrete guard, we cannot use the equality anymore. However, if we can somehow split the disjunction over here in the concrete invariance, we will be able to do the substitution A equals zero versus C equals zero. Let's talk very briefly if this might work. In the case where we do A equals zero in a one sequence over here, if A is equal to zero, that means we will be able to substitute this one over here to be zero. So that means we got B plus C is equal to N, right? And are we actually able to say B plus C equals N and maybe with a concrete guard, are we able to imply n is uh, is larger than zero? All right, is it possible? I can tell you that it's actually possible, right? Uh, you can see that, let's say this, uh, uh, look more closely. I, I want to add one more hypothesis over here. B is a natural number, right? If B is a natural number, that means B is larger than or equal to zero, right? C is actually larger than zero. If you say that uh, n, is equal to something that's larger than equal to zero plus something that's strictly larger than zero. Can we not conclude that n is simply just larger than zero? Let me say that again. If I say that n is equal to something that's strictly larger than zero plus something that's not negative, in that case, can, can we not just conclude that n would be strictly larger than zero? Then, and then there we go. We actually got a, uh, the goal, right? It's only a quick sketch, right? What if we go for this branch over here? When C is equal to zero, if we simply do the substitution, well, I'm not sure if you see that already. If I simply replace the C over here just by zero, I got zero larger than zero, which is false. Wouldn't that be nice? If the hypothesis is false, logically, uh, it will be just trivial because false implies anything, right? So you can see my reasoning process over here. Before I actually go ahead and start the uh, the proof, uh, constructing the proof tree, I want to think about what path can I really take. Apparently, I cannot just use the concrete guard specifically over here just for the equality replacement. I cannot do that. But if I split the disjunctive hypothesis into two equalities, I will be able to apply the equality over here, maybe once or twice. Right. So hopefully that's uh, some verbal remark just to share with you how I actually view uh, how to uh, how to tackle this uh, the proof of this sequence over here. Right. Let's now try to uh, let's now start doing it. Right. So overall, I will need to keep the following uh, hypothesis. I definitely want to keep this one over here. It's going to be useful. I want to keep this one also here. I want to keep this one here. Also, as I mentioned, I might also want to keep this one. This will be useful for the first branch, right? So I want to keep these four. And to keep them, I need to apply monotonicity, right? So I would say by monotonicity over here, I'm going to keep, I'm going to drop everything else. So that means I'm going to keep uh, B is a member of natural number and also a plus b plus c equals n and also c strictly larger than zero entails n larger than zero right that's what i have i'm just dropping all the ir irrelevant hypothesis hypothesis how do i know they're irrelevant you can just uh rewatch what i just remarked about uh, uh 30 seconds ago right i remarked that for a few minutes so hopefully you're following that but you know uh rewind the video if you want to just uh, re-listen my remark i think i said it quite clearly but of course if you got any further doubts speak to me i'll be more than happy to reiterate that with you all right so what should we do so our goal really is uh did i forgot uh did i forget to copy another okay i forgot to copy another one beg your pardon so let me do it again Let's now try to do, so I forgot to copy also the A equals zero or C equals zero. I just forgot, right? Of course, that one's critical. Otherwise, how can we do the uh, substitution eventually, right? Right, so these are the one, two, three, four we keep. One, two, three, four, all right? 
And what we want to do now is to really split the disjunctive hypothesis into two, right? What rule should we apply? We should really apply the, o, uh, the OR left because the disjunctive hypothesis appears to the left of the uh, turnstile. That's why we're doing it. So what I would do is I'm going to actually say by applying OR L over here, and I'm going to get two sequence. One is going, uh, let me just put it this way. Let me draw better. Okay, hopefully that's good. And the one is going to be A equals zero. The other one is going to be C equals zero. So let me put the A equal to zero branch on the top. So I still got B is a natural number. And also A plus B plus C equals N. And also A equals zero, only one of it. Right, and also C larger than zero. Turn style, and larger than zero. Of course, I can make this smaller. Right, give me a moment. I'll prettify it. Okay, this one here, and then I'm just going to make it smaller. Okay, that should be good enough. Oh, maybe even smaller. That's okay. How about this one here? Good. And what about the second one? It's going to be C equals zero, right? So I still got the others, the other hypothesis. So B is a member of natural number A plus B plus C equals N. And also C equals zero, C larger than zero, turnstile, N larger than zero, right? You can see this is a single application of the ORL inference rule. And that one amazingly give us two sequence to prove independently, but each one of them can be tackled quite easily. So that's really the good thing about using this one here. All right, let me just make this one also smaller. All right. All right, so this one here. Good. Let's now tackle one by one. We're gonna prove this one here and then prove one this here independently. Okay. What about this one over here? This one here, All right? What should we do? As I said before, since now we actually got the a uh, does a equals zero, so we can definitely do a will be the left hand side, and also zero will be the right hand side, right? We're gonna do it from left to right. We're gonna replace every occurrence of a by zero. What are other occurrences of a? I think this is the only one. All right. So let's now apply that. And after applying it, we can also drop other hypotheses. And I decide that this is not gonna be useful because think about what's gonna happen. So once we do the replacement, we're going to replace this A over here just by zero. And I can, I uh, eat, you, uh, later on, in order to argue about a go, I only need B plus C equals N, and also C larger than zero, and also B is a natural number. These are the three I need. Sorry, I can just drop this one. This is the one I don't need anymore. Sorry, I said that this one is not relevant. But actually, it, it, it is relevant, right? right I'm, I'm doing this from scratch, right? Just uh, to get it with you. So uh, what we can do is we can do EQ LR, right? And then followed by monotonicity, right? And I already said before, if you are required to not to uh, combine any steps, then you have to do uh, uh, two sequence rather than combining that into one, okay? Right, so this one, what should we do? So we're going to, first of all, do, re do the replacement. Every occurrence of A is going to be re replaced by zero. So we still got B is a member of natural number, we need that, that's right better, natural number, and also zero plus B plus C equals N, and also C larger than zero. So I'm dropping this one here. Turn style, N larger than zero, right? So that's what I have over here. Let's see if there's anything else we can do. You want to make sure every step you actually use you do to really transform the sequence is justifiable, right? If there's anything that's not justifiable, that your proof will not be so convincing, okay? So what should we do? Well, one thing we can definitely do is zero will be canceled out, right? Because zero has no effects to the addition. So that's just by some basic arithmetic. So I'm gonna say basic arithmetic over here, right? So what I'll do is I'm going to put B is a member of natural number and then B plus C is equal to N, and then C larger than zero, and turn style, 
and larger than zero. And this is really the part I actually mentioned earlier uh, before I started the proof, right? That's really one of the uh, uh, insight I gave to you even before the proof was started. And this one here, let me just make it a little bit smaller over here. Okay, let's think about it again. Let's just make one example here. So we say that, let's say C is larger than C, right? For example, we, we are talking about this. B is a natural number, meaning that B is larger than or equal to zero. And also B plus C is equal to N, right? What? Let me just, uh, for intuition, let me just write it this way. N is equal to B plus C, right? The same. And also C is larger than zero, right? So this part here, I'm just writing that in here, right? How can we see that? Why don't we just plug in some number? B is larger than or equal to zero. Why don't we simply just put zero? B can be zero, and, and C is actually larger than zero. Why don't we say one? Let's say C here, we simply put one, and B here, we simply put zero. In that case, the addition of B and C will, uh, will be N, which is strictly larger than zero. Agree? And you can try another number, okay? So let's say B larger than equal to zero. Why don't we say B is actually equal to one? In that case, the smallest value for C will just be one. So we can still just plug in one. So B, we, if we put one over here, one plus one will be two, which is N, which will be still be strictly larger than zero. So it's a, a arithmetic property over here, right? So I'm just trying to justify to, to say why it's a basic arithmetic property. So what we can do is we can say by another round of arithmetic property, this really means that, okay, this blue over here. So that means N, larger than zero entails n larger than zero so what you really want to understand is about why these three together really mean n larger than zero right already tried to justify by using some example number either we can get zero and also zero or we can get one and one right so uh well actually so either we can get zero and one or we can get one and one right either way Right, different combinations, just to show you some example. Right, we're almost done with this branch, almost done. And here you can see the hypothesis and also the goal happen to be the same predicates. And can we conclude? Do we need any further justification? Well, we can just apply hypothesis rule over here, right? And we can simply say by hypothesis rule, and we are done for this branch. Right, so this part over here is done, so we can check for one branch. And we're proving this independently of the other branch. Right, let's now do the other branch. What about the other branch? For that one, we are going to also use the uh, equality over here. So this will be the left-hand side, and this will be the right-hand side, right? And we got different places to really uh, uh, to substitute. What instances do we have for C? We got C here. We also got C here, right? So what we can what we can definitely uh, replace every occurrence of C over here just by zero, zero here and zero here. However, we can also apply monotonicity to, to drop all the irrelevant hypotheses. I propose we drop this one here, we drop this one here, we also drop this one here. We only leave zero larger than zero. That'll be enough. Okay, let's do that. So what I will do is I'm gonna say by EQ, LR, and also monotonicity. Once we do that, what we're gonna get is we're going to get, so C replaced by zero, so we got zero larger than zero, and we draw every other hypothesis. Only leave this one here. And we also got N larger than zero, right? And by basic arithmetic, that one I don't need to justify in front of you. Zero larger than zero is false, right? So that means by the basic arithmetic, I know that I got false. And remember, that's the symbol, the button symbol. Intel, n larger than zero. And do we actually prove this sequence here? Do we need to do uh, any further proof? Actually, this will be a uh, proof just by the axiom rule. If the false is actually the hypothesis, that can just uh, that can simply uh, the sequence can just be proved automatically because false implies anything, right? And then I'm gonna apply just the false L rule because the false appears to the left of the turnstile. 
So this will be the false L over here. And this branch is also done. So you can see now really the beauty about applying the rule of ORL because the original sequence really wouldn't allow you to make any progress because somehow the uh, equalities over here are placed in as the left and right operands for this junction, which will make this rule not applicable. So that's why we split the uh, original single sequence into two sequence, and we will be able to, and we were able to actually uh, discharge them separately, independently, right? Alrighty, so that's about the uh, uh, second proof, and hopefully you're following it. And if you just go back to the slides, you will see the complete details over here. Well, the same as what I just presented on my iPad for the uh, for both proof obligations over here. All right, so study this carefully, and I would suggest you really try to redo the proof yourself. Maybe after taking uh, uh, the break for a while, so you forget about the details, and then try to do it again uh, with fresh memory. Alrighty, let's now move on to proving the other part of the refinements, which is about invariant preservation.